So welcome back. This is going to be our last video on the coordinate geometry of the circle. Again, we're going to be talking about circles that are tangent to the axis. Uh, this specific question is probably going to be one of the hardest questions we'll have seen, uh, but we'll go ahead anyway. We'll see how we get on. So we're asked to find the equation of two circles that go through the points 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 1, and they're also a tangent to the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to, first I'm going to draw a little sketch just so we can kind of get our head straight. We know what we're doing. So we're going to have our y-axis here. We're going to have our x-axis here. I'm going to put a little arrow there, a little arrow there, y and x. So we're going to have our two points, which is going to be, say, the first one I'll say is 2 minus 1 will be maybe here, and then 3 minus 2 will be maybe here. All right? So we're going to have two different circles that go through this point. The first one is going to look something like this here. And it's not a perfect circle. It's going to go through those two points, and it's going to be a tangent to the x-axis. The second circle might look something like this here, right? It's going to be a tangent to the x-axis again, and it's going to go through those two points. So the idea of that sketch, I know it isn't perfectly accurate, but it's just to give you guys an idea of what they mean by the two circles. So there are two possible circles that can go through those two points and still be a tangent to the x-axis. So we have two, three pieces of information. We have two points, and we know the x-axis is a tangent to the circle. So how are we going to use those three pieces of information? to try and find the equation of the circle. So remember, the general form of the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. So we're going to need to find g, f, and c. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sub these points 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 1 into all the x and y values. So that's something that we've seen before in our videos when we were trying to find the equation of a circle. So if you haven't watched those, we'd recommend going back and watching them because I'm going to skip ahead to the answer of these two um, just to save you guys time. I don't want to keep the video as short as possible. So I'll uh, sub these in quickly and then I'll let you guys see the answers. Uh, if, again, if you're not so certain, you can look back on our videos on finding the equations of circles. All right. So there I've quickly done that. I subbed in the point 3 minus 2 and 2 minus 1. So you put the 3 in wherever there's an x and the minus 2 in wherever there's a y. You work through all the algebra and you're get to, going to get two equations in g, f, and c. So you have 6g minus 4f plus c is equal to minus 13. That's equation 1. And then 4g minus 2f plus c is equal to minus 5. And that's our equation 2. All right. So now we need to somehow use this final piece of information that the circle is a tangent to the x-axis. Uh, we have to use that to find another equation so we can help solve for g, f, and c. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do that. So first of all, we're going to draw our axes again. So our y-axis and our... I'm just going to redo those because that's too wonky. Our y-axis and our x-axis here. X and y. So we're going to draw a yellow line. That's going to be like this, or a yellow circle. And this is a tangent to the x-axis here. So we know that this point is minus g minus f. That's the center point of a circle. So we also know that uh, this, say, the, the x-coordinate is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it depends how far out it is on the x-axis. And then also this y-coordinate, it depends how far it is down on the uh, y-axis here. So in this case here, this is minus 5, or minus f, sorry, I mean to say, minus f down on the y-axis, so whichever number minus f is. So that means the distance from here to here is minus f. And it also means that the distance from here up to there is also minus f. And we can see that that distance there is the radius. So if you remember from the last video, we can say that the radius is equal to the modulus of minus f. And also, if we write x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c is equal to 0. Do you remember what the radius of uh, the circle of this form is? So it's in the tables book, if you're not sure. So it's equal, or is equal to the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So what we're going to do is, and what you're always going to do if you know that a circle is a tangent to the x-axis or to the y-axis, you can use this, this kind of trick. We're going to say since that's or, and that's or as well, we're going to say that minus f is equal to the square root of g squared plus f squared minus c. So now to get rid of the modulus brackets, what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. So if we square this side, we're going to get f squared. If we square this side, we're just going to get what's inside the square root, um, g squared plus f squared minus c. So now we can cancel. 
the F and the F on both sides. And what we're going to be left with is we're going to be left with C is equal to G squared. Right. So that's the trick to this question, really. So the other two points you guys should have been able to do because we looked at questions like those before. So subbing in the points three and minus two and then two and minus one. Um, so getting to there should be OK. Uh, and then the only tricky bit or the to be honest, it is quite tricky It's a really hard question. But if you can get this trick here, then the rest of the question is just algebra and solving the equations. So again, this is minus F down the center point is that means the radius is going to be minus F. So you can say or is equal to the modulus of minus F. Also, the radius is equal to the square root of G squared plus F squared minus C. You let them equal to each other, you square both sides and you end up with C is equal to G squared. All right. So now we have three different equations. This is number three, and we can use algebra to solve three simultaneous equations. All right. So we have equation one, equation two, and then equation three. So what I'm going to have to do here with equation one and two is we're going to have to mix them together and make an equation that just has G and C in it. So we can use this third equation to sub it in. All right. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to scroll across. So our two equations are going to be a little green here. So these are our two equations we have. So this is equation uh, two, I think, and equation one, or the other way around. But they're the two equations we got from subbing in the points. So now we have to somehow, uh, with these two equations, we have to cancel out the Fs so we can make an equation in just G and C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top line here by minus two. So change this to plus four F. So then we're going to get minus eight G plus four F minus two C is equal to plus 10. And then here, it's still going to be 6g minus 4f plus c is equal to minus 13. If we put the two of these together, we're going to find that the plus 4f and the minus 4f cancel. We're going to be left with minus 2g minus c is equal to minus 3. Or just to multiply everything by minus 1 to get rid of all the minuses, we're going to get 2g plus c is equal to 3. All right. So now we have this equation which I'm going to call equation four and we can start solving the rest of it. So we also know that C is equal to G squared. So if we mix and this is equation three, if we mix equation three and equation four, um, we can start solving for G. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to write two G plus and instead of writing C like there is here, I'm going to write G squared because C is equal to G squared. So two G plus G squared is equal to three. And now we have a quadratic equation. We have G squared plus 2g minus 3 is equal to 0. So we're going to, have to factorize that. That means that g is going to be equal to plus 3, or sorry, g plus 3, and g minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. Um, and that means that g is going to be equal to minus 3, or g is going to be equal to 1. So those are our two values of g. Um, so now we need to find our two values of c. So remember, we're going to get different, we're going to get two different values, we're going to get sorry, two different values for G, F and C. So we're going to get one G, F and C, and then another G, F and C, because there are two circles. Remember back to the start of the question, there were always two circles we were talking about. So for C, in this case, C is just going to be equal to nine. And the reason I know that is because C is equal to G squared, and minus three squared is going to be nine. And then in this case, C is equal to G squared. So one squared is just equal to one. So here we have g is equal to minus 3 and c is equal to 9 and then g is equal to 1 and c is also equal to 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one of these equations, one of 1 and 2 out and then we're going to have to sub in our values for g and c and get up two different values for f. So 4g minus 2f plus c. So I'm going to write 4g minus 2f plus c is equal to minus 5 and then again 4g minus 2f plus c is equal to minus five. I'm going to sub in this G and C into this one here. I'm going to sub this G and C into this one here. All right. So we're going to get four by minus three minus two F plus nine is equal to minus five. That's going to mean that minus 12 minus two F plus nine is equal to minus five. So minus 12 and plus nine, we're going to get minus two F minus three is equal to minus five. If we solve this for f then, uh, I'm going to multiply everything by minus one. So it's going to be two f plus three is equal to five. Two f is equal to two. And that means that f is equal to 
one in this case, all right? Uh, and then we're gonna do the same for this over here. I'll do it in red just to change things up. It's gonna be four by one minus two F plus one is equal to minus five. So that's gonna be four minus two F plus one is equal to minus five. It's gonna be minus two F plus five is equal to minus five. That's minus two F is equal to minus 10. That means F is gonna be equal to just plus five. All right, so those are our two answers. We have that G is equal to minus three, C is equal to nine, and then F is equal to one, or else G is equal to one, C is equal to one, and F is equal to five. So that means if we wanna write the equations of the two circles as our answers, I'm just gonna call this one circle one. It's gonna be X squared plus Y squared, X squared plus Y squared, plus two X, plus 10Y plus one, plus two X plus 10Y plus one is equal to zero. And then our second circle is going to be X squared plus Y squared again, X squared plus Y squared. It's gonna be minus six X plus two Y, minus six X plus two Y, and then plus nine is equal to zero, right? So those are the two equations of the circles, and I got those just by subbing in G, C, and F, and then G, C, and F. So you have to make sure to keep these separate because they're two separate circles, so you can't mix this G and this C or this G and this C. You have to keep them very separate. So those are the two equations of the two circles that, like we said at the start of the question, like we're answering the question, both those uh, circles, they go through the points three minus two, two minus one, and the x-axis is a tangent to them. So those two circles I sketched out there. So sorry about that, that was a really long video, but that's quite a difficult uh, question. The hardest bit about that is this little trick here. Once you can do this little trick here, then the rest of it is just kind of algebra. So I um, hope you enjoyed the videos, hope you enjoyed the playlist. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, there's loads more playlists so you can have a look around. Don't forget to check out the website as well, ExamLearn, and you can look at all the cool free features we have as well as a great study note. So we'll see you in the next playlist anyway and uh, enjoy, good luck.